Yo, yo, welcome everybody to another episode of Motherfucking Sarcasm and Orgasms. Thank you for listening and tuning in. And on today's podcast, I got two very special brothers coming all the way from the West Coast that is going to join your boy, Mr. Will Day Fresh. I am joined by my guest, Mr. Kamal, a.k.a. the Black Sensei, and Mr. Frank, a.k.a. the Tank. What is going on, fellas? Yo, what's man. good, man? man. <laughs> hey, man, but hey, Will, it's a pleasure to be on, brother, man. We yeah, appreciate man. you. We appreciate your time. You know what I mean? We appreciate you tuning in to us, man. And uh, mm-hmm. I've become a fan of your show as well, man. So mm-hmm. um, just excited to be on, man. Excited to be doing something different, something new, and uh, collaborating, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. definitely, definitely. Well, I thank you so much. I mean, I'm trying out here just like y'all brothers, you know, it's not easy trying to do these podcasts and do these video blogs so thank you so much for giving me y'all time really i appreciate it yes sir hey it ain't no problem man you know whenever you call just you gotta throw the throw the uh the magic thing tank sign in the sky man and we like like we're gonna be here baby (laughs) we're gonna be here every time you know what i'm saying yes (laughs) yes i know i know the magic thing (laughs) tank i like that so let's get into that like tell me how do y'all brothers hooked up and y'all came up with the magic think tank and y'all started potting? Like, how did that come about? Um, so Kamal and I are, uh, you know, best friends and we met in college mm-hmm. and, uh, we were, you know, roommates, um, during this time for, for, for years. And, uh, you know, we just always had a, a, a natural connection. We would have people come over to the house literally just to hear us talk. Like, they would just kick it on the couch. They wouldn't even talk to us. They would just kick it to listen to our conversations that we had. So we've always had the natural banter. Now, Magic, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, you and your shows and what you've been doing. Well, I got a couple shows. One of them called The Sears Glare. That's more like um, informative. I talk about the news from like a black man's perspective. And I try to bring uh, certain articles that a lot of motherfuckers don't be talking about, like one of the things I talked about lately was shout out to Perry from the Shy saved another black man's life. You feel me? I want to bring black excellence onto the show and not just always some black drama or black pain. Yes, sir. And then The Gap, that's another show that I do a solo. That's more of like I want to show my production side because I used I used to be like a videographer and learned all Damn. about like creating okay. videos and shit like that. So I wanted to show my skills and personally I wanted to be behind the damn camera. <laughs> but I couldn't find nobody to like consistently do shows with me until you know I met Frank and shit. It um well the thing about it uh is like I also like doing editing. Mm-hmm. So I just couldn't find somebody to be in front of the camera consistently. And I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna just do it on my own. And everybody always say, like, oh, you look good in front of the camera and shit. And I was like, man, I don't know, bro. And then <laughs> I was like, bro, this shit is hella fun. And I could be informative and people tell me, like, you know, that I'll be giving them valuable information. But it's it's weird that I, I start thinking, like, damn, I should really do this shit when, when motherfuckers start hating. Here, bro. When they start talking shit, they start, you know, saying certain stuff about the shows and the pod. And I'm like, in a weird, twisted way, I'm like, damn, I really do got something here. Cause I already got the positive, but then also like the negative, you always gotta have balance. So that's what like my show try to bring it like balance and stuff like that. And then with me and Frank. Is uh the magic think tank <clears throat> that plays off our, our nicknames too? Like my nickname Magic and then his nickname Tank. And you know what I mean? We come at it like a like a think tank. You yes. know, we talk yes. about politics, current events, but we put we talk about it from our perspective, and we try to bring in shit that other people are not really bringing in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, know, yeah. you know the story that's going around that hell of people talking about the whole like. Lori Harvey and the Michael B. Jordan breakup and shit like that. It's like we purposely don't try to talk about that because everybody else wants to talk about the shit. Yeah. We want to talk right. about elephants stomping a mud hole and people asses right now. <laughs> 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 so to kind of circle back around to your question, Will, 
Um, so as you can see, Maul's been doing this for a while. Now I'm I'm newer to the scene, but you know, he had a couple shows with a couple partners before and it didn't really pan out the way he wanted it to. Yeah. And uh so I talked to him previously. I'm like, man, I'll do it with you. Um, you know, we've always had a good banter. And he was like, Yeah, I'll think about it. I was hesitant. Yeah. I ain't gonna yeah. lie, I was scoring, I was scoring like a broken hearted woman. Yeah, and, and he was scoring from doing the shows <laughs> with friends before. Um, and those relationships kind of faltered a little bit. But I'm the type, I'm not about to let any of this shit get in the way of my friendship. Again, that's my brother. So um, you know, even if the show you know, failed, we would still be friends and brothers, but I didn't think it would be because we good at this shit, you know what I mean? So uh, we, we've always been good at talking, um, just talking our shit and being able to talk about a bunch of different topics and a ser- talking about serious topics and bringing levity to those situations because in a black community, that's what we're good at, right? Taking yeah, those yeah. bad situations and bringing levity to them because we didn't have shit else to bring to it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was a natural progression. And uh, so after, you know, the second time, I'm like, hey, let's do it. He was like, you know what? Let's go in. And it's been magic ever since then, man. It, you know, a, a year in, man. And we're still, you know, finding our way through the mud. And, um, you know, we, we, we got the uh, the fan base growing. And we're just excited, man, for, for you know, the next steps, um, you know, really through this podcast scene. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear that, and I'm still newer into it. I'm still trying to figure out my way because I'm doing it all solo. So, and I've interviewed people to where it's been a duo or a threesome or whatever. But, but and then I've also interviewed single people, and it's like everyone still has that same struggle, still trying to find their way in and make sure they're hitting that audience, like hitting those words that everybody's going to tune into. But it's another thing. It's like you don't find two. Uh, consistent male, well, black male co hosts together. So I pay homage yeah. to both of y'all dudes still trying ever, ever so after long. So y'all dudes keep up the great work. And I myself, you know, have did my research on y'all, seeing more with Ma and what he's doing and his other shows that I did not know he had, but I will go check it out. Yeah, check it nice. out, bro. <laughs> but it's nice to know that y'all guys are still in the mud, still trying to do it. So y'all keep up the good work. Appreciate yeah, it. I really do. We appreciate you, bro. And like to me, it's like that with me and Frank talking and shit. This shit easy to yeah. me. To yeah. me, you feel me. I think the 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 hardest part for for me sometimes is is more of the uh, getting in connection with my fucking peers. I was talking to Frank about this like a couple days ago like this collaboration that we doing right now i i really like this but it's it's lacking especially when it comes mm-hmm. to like you know the 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 black community and us coming together and if we're not talking about no motherfucking sports some goddamn music <laughs> goddamn ratchet relationship shit yeah yeah or you know what i mean most time people ain't coming they ain't coming together Collab. No, they're they're not, and it's and that's fu- that's a fucked up thing about it. Like I had an interview the other day with my one boy. I hooked up Rose. Shout out to him. Uh, shouts to Rose. Um, he we were saying like, why don't we need to talk about celebrity gossip? Like, it ain't got shit to do with the regular public. We yeah. don't get two fucks. Like, I don't give a damn who she was smashing or who she smashing. It ain't got no sense to me. I want to know is how I'm going to continue to make these episodes that are relevant, that are current, that you're actually going to listen to. Like, I have a couple episodes like fuck them kids, stupid people, <laughs> hybo, you know, shit like that that makes yeah. sense. Like, hybo, help a brother out. Are you going to help this brother out to do what he needs to? Like, yeah. it's just shit content that needs to be made that people don't want to make and before i let you go frank and going back to what you said mom like you got a lot of these podcasters a lot of them and i'm sorry but you got a lot of them that it's like you keep wanting to talk about sports how many times do you talk about the same shit over and over how many podcasters do you need to have where you're talking about relationships where you're talking about mental health no disrespect to mental health because it all affects us but you got the same format that over and over again and you can only want to hear it so many times before that shit becomes redundant and i'm yeah. sick of it i really am yeah man. Man. There, yeah. there's a lot of redundancy within you know the podcast in our community and most of most of them are relationship gurus and experts and they single 
Like, how the fuck <laughs> you are an expert and you single, my nigga? You know what I mean? That's like me being a, a basketball expert and I can't even make a layup. Like, nah. it doesn't even make fucking sense to me. You know, Steve Harvey is like on TV and he's supposed to be like the next guy. This nigga has been divorced three times. How is this nigga a relationship expert? Like, come on, dog. Hey, I'm not on Steve Harvey, bro. He a judge, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he yeah. was a good judge. He was judge. Judge. Yeah. Yeah. not his wife, so obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so again, this is what we do. We, we, we put so much emphasis on celebrity. You know what I mean? And we don't pay attention to what's actually going on. It's all a PR scam. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, and the people is. that you're listening to are single or are in bad relationships or nigga, there's no such thing as an expert. Live your life, dog. <laughs> and you want to know life. Something? Every relationship is different. What's up? It 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 gives me hope though. Cause if these it niggas can be uh yeah, if they could be relationship gurus, right? Then motherfucker, I could be a doctor. Yeah, I'm yeah, Dr. Maul. Yeah. I don't need no education. No, I'm gonna be an astrophysicist. A a never. I don't even know the words that go within it, but I ain't yeah. never. Gonna, but I can be it. I can be it. I'm gonna be an expert on astrophysics, and I'm gonna make a, a, a new podcast. And I'm gonna yeah. be the go-to guy. Boy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> imagine a Dr. Tank, bro. Think about it. How the fuck Pepper become doctor? You get that nigga Dr. Dr. Pepper. Hey, Dr. Drake, but how is that nigga a doctor? He ain't never surgically fucking repaired a goddamn arm. All right, you feel me? Hey, hey, Dr. Magic, chill, fam. Chill, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Magic. Chill, chill, you know, Dr. Magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the other doctor's name? White dude. Dr. 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 Seuss. You got Dr. Dr. Seuss out there. Oh, Dr. Seuss? Is Dr. Seuss? Oh my God, bro. How did they get that? That goes to show you the American dream can be lived by anybody. All you got to do is say it. You speak it into existence, and it happens. You yeah. want to be a doctor? Just put that doctor at the beginning of your name. I'm telling you, Doctor Fresh. <laughs> okay, Doctor Fresh over here. Listen, we, we, we three doctors talking right now, bro. Yeah, we doctors. Bro, you <laughs> niggas ain't listening to us. Bro, I need to be listening. We doctors. We prescribe this podcast to you right now. Hell yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> On God, nigga. On God. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, man, like, that I really think about it when it comes to just, like, black people. I'm tired of being fucking pigeonholed and stereotyped into a goddamn box. I finally feel how, like, fucking artists feel when they be put in a box in a certain genre and they're like, no, nah, I ain't. I ain't that. I ain't doing that. No, nah, I'm tired of yeah. us being put into a box like that. I want to talk about sometimes what white people talk about. They get to talk about marshmallows, cotton candy, and getting hell abuse. Bro, I be listening they to this podcast, bro. Kids. And I'm like, bro, no. what the fuck is this about? And how do they have two million listeners to this shit? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> You're like, they talk about ghost cats. Now we have a ghost cat here. <laughs> the name Skedaddle. You're like, how the hell did they get the check for this? <laughs> Damn. Hey, I'm about, to re- I'm about to flip this shit, though, bro. You know how we get culturally appropriated all the time for yeah. our shit that we put out in our content? I'm going to start doing that shit to them. So I'm going to go on their podcast. I'm going to listen to that shit about ghost cats. Then I'm spitting that same shit right <laughs> back at them. Right back at him, nigga. That's what we got to start doing, baby. Appropriating the culture. All right? We got to appropriate that, that, that culture, that, that, that's, that's, that's reverse appropriating the culture. Yeah. Yeah, bro. That's what we doing now. That's what 2022 is about. Yeah. Cultural appropriation, yeah. baby. Hell yeah. That's what we doing, man. <laughs> Hell okay, yeah. all right, since y'all want to get into this, I'll ask you, forgive it or fuck it, what's something that's going on in y'all lives or in the world that y'all say forgive it or fuck it? Mm. Mm. Frank, I'm going to let you go first, bro, bro. All right, man. I ponder on this shit. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm going to say, I want to forgive the elephant that killed the lady and then okay. came back and stomped her at her funeral. Damn. I don't know if you've heard about oh. that. 
I don't know if you heard about that. You just do a quick Google search, it'll pop right up. So there was an elephant that went and he he killed a lady, a 70 year old lady, he killed her. And then at her funeral, he popped up at her funeral. Yep. And stomped her corpse. Hey, bro, I got the backstory of that, though. Okay, hold on, hold on. What you got? What you got? What you got? So the backstory is, y'all, she was actually helping out poachers. And that elephant remembered that ass. Oh. And that, oh. they took some of her kids away. Mm. So. Damn. Oh, yeah. Try to paint elephants like black people. Try oh. to paint us in a bad light and don't give us the backstory. That's the backstory. Hey, I I want to forgive the fuck out of this elephant, too. See, I was already going to forgive him. Yeah. Because I had made up a story myself in my head. And it went something like the story that you just told me. So yeah. now you reinforced my reinforcement. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, therefore, I want to forgive this elephant because, look, if somebody come in my house, start taking my kids, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they come in my house, they help people steal shit from, you know, from me, they come in my house, try to cut off my tusk. Yeah. I got every right to fuck them up. And then when people are celebrating their life, oh. I got every right to fuck that up as well. <laughs> Yes. Yes. And fuck whoever love you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, hey, mm -hmm. forgive that elephant. Oh I'm gonna call him Bubbles. Bubbles the elephant. <laughs> we got mad love for you, Bubbles, on the Magic and Game podcast. All right, we got mad love. Fresh got mad love for you too. I'm just putting words in your mouth that you ain't never say. No, I do. I do. Look it up. I got bad love. I, I, <laughs> I, you know, I agree with Ma. I do. Like, yeah, yeah. fuck that lady because you're trying to steal my shit. Just like yeah. you said, fuck you because you're stealing my tusk. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. I I would say, <laughs> fuck you. You so, know, I don't want to paint the elephant in a bad light. And you know why? Where are elephants from, bro? Africa. Africa. Mm. Mm. There we go. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's some there's some deep uh, meaning behind that one ain't that yeah. about a b you know i know what I'm you can't be an african you can't be an african killer b yep yeah right. remember when All the right. murder hornets from africa came over here yeah we got to paint them in a bad light said they're going to destroy the whole country they did Nigga, i ain't seen one i ain't seen one hornet <laughs> you know why? Because they staying in their hood, just like we do. You know what I mean? They just want to be left the fuck alone, just like that elephant wanted to be left the fuck alone. Yeah, just like us black people. <laughs> the fuck alone. <laughs> That's the end of my soliloquy. So I'll go next, I'll <laughs> say I'm going to say fuck this Johnny Depp case because it teaches okay. you that white women are really crazy. really does yeah so us black men out there we really need to stay the fuck away because you saw the most popular white man actor ever ever good looking gorgeous and all he got fucked over and tried to take for all his money look what happened yep. that dumb bitch left shit behind and now look what's going on she's about to get canceled canceled I... see yeah. i am i am of the okay we've talked about this on the magic Day Tank podcast as well I think this nigga Johnny Depp gaslighted the fuck out of her. He understood that he was going to take her to court for all of this shit, and he started to gather evidence early. Before she knew what happened, it smacked her against the head. Johnny Depp is one of the greatest actors of our generation, yep. right? Fact. So he got up there, he acted the whole time. Both of them motherfuckers is crazy. Both of them. Both of them doing bullshit. Everybody want to put, oh, Johnny Depp is in it. No, that nigga was doing bull fuck shit too. They both was doing fuck shit. They was in a toxic relationship. And Johnny Depp was the better actor at the end of the day. And you know how I can tell? Go to any video of him pulling up to the courthouse. This nigga's all out the window, giving high five. He's on stage playing a guitar. He doing all of this wild shit, just like a nigga that's wilding out that know he about to win some shit. That's what that white white man was doing. I don't, I, I don't, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna say fuck that case because, like I said, I don't ever really give a fuck about any celebrity in their personal life, their personal business. Yeah. If I don't know you, I don't really care about what you're going through. Like honestly, so um, 
yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that that point where you say fuck it. But Johnny Depp, I see you, my nigga. Yeah, no, but and, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm, before I let you go, Ma, I'm but I'm going to say, for, fuck it, because it just shows you that white women are crazy, even when it's all with the white man. It's different when it's with us niggas because we get called all types of names mm-hmm. and we get hung out to dry. Now yeah. that this happened to a white man who's out there, who's been out there, and it shows you that they are capable of doing dumb shit when it's with their own kind, as the KKK like to say. Then yeah. it shows you that it's not just us niggas. It's really not. They are crazy across the fucking board. Across the board. <laughs> across the whole board. <laughs> Go ahead, Ball. This is my thing, though. When it when Ken and Amber heard, there's a two things that kind of damned her case. One was the the phone conversations in the text. The second was she took a shit in her bed. Now, if that ain't barbaric, I don't know what it is. Johnny Depp came. As soon as he saw that shit on the bed, he start. I'm about to win the case. <laughs> do you do you know what kind of I'm shit you gotta do to somebody for them to shit in your bed? I mean, do you know what kind of trauma you gotta put somebody through for them to take a, a, a fucking deuce in your bed. Just think about the process that it takes to take a shit anywhere but the toilet. Like anywhere, like imagine shitting outside just around nobody. You understand how uncomfortable that situation is be, and no, nobody is around. So imagine stepping up on the bed, yeah. pulling your pants down, and then defecating on a human domic- domicile, you know, a place where a human lace is hit. That has to be very difficult and you have to do something very traumatic to that person for them to go to that point. Now, I'm agree with Fresh on this, man. That make white women look crazy. I'm sorry. Thank oh, yeah, you. No. I'm, not, I'm, not I'm, not I'm not denying that. I'm not agreeing. I, I'm not fooled by the narrative that Johnny Depp was, was, was guilt-free in all of this shit. And that he did nothing to cause this. Like, I, I don't think so. Again, I'm, I'm going to and I'm gonna run it right back to what I said before. I can give a fuck, though. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's just something you you have to think about, but that's where I lay on it. So uh, hold on, what I'll forgive if uh, fuck it. All right, man. Let me um I'm gonna I'm going to forgive uh who can I forgive? I'm gonna forgive and it's gonna be sports, I'm gonna forgive the Boston Celtics fans. I forgive wow. you. No. I, I'm a Warriors fan, and I you forgive you for that ass whooping we gave y'all. So I forgive y'all. You know what I mean? We, we know the are in some turmoil right now and shit. So I forgive y'all. And for the listeners out there, these two brothers are from the Bay Area. So that's why they, Magic is from the Bay Area. I'm from here. Frank I'm from DC. So from he's from he's from hating too. He's from the yeah. Bay. Yeah. And. Okay. What I want to say, fuck it to, I want to say fuck it to all them people that's trashing on light skin greatness. When we going to talk about the people that's trashing on the Drake album. I ain't listened to it yet, but they trashing the light skin legend. So we going to say fuck them people. Two, people that's talking shit about Steph Curry before he won the ring. We going to say fuck y'all. <laughs> on light skin greatness. Fresh, you part of the light skin correlation? What's up? Yeah, I am. I am. And you know what? I I have mixed reviews because I'm down with Steph. Yes, it's good that he finally got his props. Mm-hmm. Homage and congratulations to him. But the Drake album, I don't know, bro. I listened to it the other night and I wasn't impressed. Okay. I, out of 10 mics, I'll give it like five and a half, bro. I God, really damn. will. Damn. And I'm not... <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, the one you put out, you know, CLB, that was good. I gave that seven and a half. But this yeah. one, nah, bro, it, there, there really wasn't anything on there that I'm going to put on my playlist that I'm going to slap in my car. So it's all for these that these moody 
amber white bitches. So I mean, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. It just it uh, wasn't was slapping for me. The I mean, light skin, the light skin delegation would like to trade Drake. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we, we gotta trade. Him, bro. We, we can't trade him. Everybody is entitled to have at least one bad album. Every great didn't have either one or two. It, it happens. It happens. But That's still, true. that. That it just it wasn't hidden like it was the last couple of months. I need to know, know this. Zara elevator music. And Zara's don't even have elevators. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point. He's got I got point. one question for you though, Fresh. Being from the D, who is your favorite artist? Mm, Overall? Overall? Because yeah. yeah. I got tons of them. I would say that I love, and I'm going to have to go out to the West, is E40. Because I yeah. listen to all his albums from the beginning been, all the way to him. E40 been getting all, all kinds of love lately, bro. Yes, because he, he just he got that energy that you just can't find. Like, you know, y'all have that soil that is just nothing like anything else. Fight best rapper out of Detroit. Best, huh? best rapper out of Detroit, not name Eminem. Best rapper. Oh. Ooh, that's really, really tough because there are some good ones. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not. I'm going uh, Royce to 5'9 all Royce the way. Too. Royce pretty fire. I'd Damn. take Royce too. I would. I would. Especially his one song he had, uh, hip hop. That one, I love that yeah. song. I play yeah, it all the fine. time. Yeah. All the time. So I, I really can't I really can't say because I don't listen to a lot of Detroit rappers that much because Detroit is really garbage, if you ask me. <laughs> mm. When it comes to the rap scene, I mean Yeah, I, I yeah, because Detroit artists though. Yes, but cause see here's the thing. Everybody's always trying to rap um not rap, uh one up another. Here it's like crabs oh, okay. in a bucket. So no one is trying to help anyone. Like one gets on, then you just fucking forget about everybody. And then they all want to look the same. They all want to sound the same. Like I'm not one that's going to spend three bands on some fucking sunglasses. Like buffs are okay, but I don't like them. I hate them. <laughs> They're the most ugliest shit ever created. But you got these dumb niggas out here that want to spend money on it, which makes no fucking sense. Yeah. You're spending three bands on some sunglasses and you barely got your ass clean. Like, make that make sense. <laughs> Damn. That's true. Tired. Pow, 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 pow. Hey, yes, so y'all, y'all one cheek wipers over there. One cheek, yes. Not me. <laughs> um, bro. No, no. My dad told me to wipe it like I'm blind. Like, I rub it, rub it. Then once I feel red, then it's good. So, yeah. 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 I put it, I put it on the wall like it's braille. So, I try to, you know, feel my way and make sure nothing else is there. So. <laughs> and that is an ass wiping lesson by our man, Fred. Right? <laughs> so, if you ain't rubbed the top layer of skin off your ass crack. <laughs> Yeah, you ain't doing right. Doing right. 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 God, I've been mean, so good. I haven't had streaks in my draw for like 10 years. That's just how confident I am. So. This nigga got the streak free streak. Okay. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Fight you... is the irritation. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, going good. back to it, it's like there's just really no Detroit rapper right now that is any good to me, to my ears. I could be different, but I'm not out in the streets because I got way too much to live for. So I ain't no. trying to get caught up. Yeah. I'm really not. I feel you. I would say Big Sean, Royce, M, top three for me. Man, I like I like a lot of Detroit artists though, man. Like Danny Brown, uh Baby Money, um uh I think it's uh Giovanni Da Vinci. Um who else I like? T Grizzly, sometimes I like some of his shit. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I wonder if, if is it more of like fresh, like since you live in Detroit and you probably exposed to so many motherfuckers trying to be rappers that you kind of kind of turned off from it compared to yeah, like Jaden. you and Frank. We not there, so when we mm -hmm. hear certain artists, it's through like certain mediums that like you know find the good or the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. Detroit artists. And I say like this, it's like once they get put on, then you stop hearing from them because I remember a couple years ago when T Grizzly came out, you know, praying on my downfall. Once that came out, yes, it was popping. Then he got on, he got popping, got national. Now you don't hear him anymore. Danny Brown's a little bit different. He was on, he was still doing his thing, like minor, 
minor stream then he got caught the wave stream mainstream wave a little bit then he just kind of faded but he's still doing his thing behind the scenes big yeah. sean now that is a different one because he first got put on by kanye after yeah. he got put on he started hitting and he still is and he yeah. still comes back here still comes back here but it's like one of that things is like once you get put on you go ghost like yeah. you you don't come back to the streets and you know feel us like you was before now another artist a female cash doll listen with her mess with her she's got some good ones but all these once you leave here it's like we don't ever hear from you ever again never Damn. and if we do and if we do it's not like what it was when you were first coming up so i mean it's another one of those things like yeah because you can be doing your thing you do the underground scene everybody knows your name knows your shit you popping on social media everybody's following you but once you get that big check then you gone like you a black man to the suburbs we ain't never seen you again and that's okay <laughs> and that is okay that is okay that you have yeah. better surroundings but don't say you for the streets and you still tr and you live in you rap in street life, but you live in suburban life. You can't pick one you. or the other. You gotta go. I, I, I hate. I, I would hate to spoil it for you, but this is a spoiler. All them niggas do that. One hundred percent of the mother. <laughs> only motherfucker. Only motherfucker that was still doing it is ODB. Rest in peace. And, and Red Man and Method Man, they still live in the hood when they yeah. are millionaires. And I'm like, what mm -hmm. the fuck is wrong with you niggas? Why are you yeah. still there? <laughs> but we also have to remember that rap is different 20 years ago than it was now. Yeah, like, yeah, no, for and sure. I remember here, I forget the article was like, you would put out a single to promote the album. You would put out one or two singles to promote the album. Then the album drops, then you got buzz. Now it's like you straight putting out garbage and it is garbage and you putting yeah. out more garbage and it just becomes a repetitive cycle like how can you go straight from jail to straight to the penthouse what sense does that make where yeah. did that happen yeah. like there's another rapper from here estg that nigga looks like a fucking creepy crawler because i don't know if he's had a stroke or he's got his ass beat left to right, but all his shit is to the left. And he talk like this the whole time. And he rap like it too. It's like, cause I remember seeing him on um a million dollars worth of dreaming. He got all this shit. Like you got all this jewelry for what fucking what are you proving? That yeah. you you got more money than I do. Like, I don't give a fuck. But if it takes one person to run up on you and cold cock your ass and steal all your shit, I bet you won't be shining then. Like, that's why I don't understand about these rappers. Why are you preaching something you're not doing? Like, really, what are you doing for yourself? How is it getting you anywhere? It's kind of like the catch 22, though, because it's like if they if they don't do that, then they might not attract fans. Because for some weird reason, fans kind of gravitate towards that. Yeah, that's what that's what they glorify in the hood. You know what I'm saying? The spin the block music is the thing now. Uh, yeah. Well, it's always been in, in hip hop, right? Like the more gangster mm -hmm. you were, the more shit you talking, the more people gravitate towards you. You know, yeah. sonically. So, hey. I, I mean, I could talk about this all day, every day, because I might be a consumer, but I'm a consumer of certain products. Yeah, I'm only going to buy into what I, I like. And, you know, like going back to it, that Drake album wasn't that very good. And it's okay. I didn't hear it. I haven't well, heard it. Well, I, see, here's my thing. I put it on my iTunes. I listened from beginning to the end. I did not skip. What I do is I always give it two and a half minutes, depending on the song. And that's another thing. Yeah, how do songs in, oh. yeah, how do songs nowadays go from damn near six minutes 20 years ago to two minutes? Like, are you that retarded that you can't get a full 16? <laughs> there's, there's not even 16 bars in two minutes. It's maybe eight, eight and a half. And then yeah. the hook is so goddamn repetitive. That takes up a minute, uh, 45 to a minute in the song. Like, it, it's really different when it comes to rap. It really is. Yeah. I can put on Biggie's album. I can put on Tupac's album, Meth and Red, uh, Ghostface, Wu-Tang, all the great classics from the 90s. Their albums. I estimated about four and a half minutes. The songs nowadays is only two and a half. So, yeah. and another thing, like I remember this one song, the baby said he's top five. How are you top five and you sound retarded? You look retarded. You look <laughs> like a retarded Doberman Pinscher dog. Like you look trash, you sound like trash, but you're saying you're top five. How are you top five? By having the same repetitive singles over and over again? By having the same melodic, tones over and over again you're not top five 
you're a top five and shit sounds the same. That's what you are. Because that's what all this shit is. It sounds the same. It really do sound the same. And I fuck with the baby too. That was pretty cool though. I think his yeah. one when he had the Charlotte jersey on and then the one right after that. Them albums was actually pretty good. But the but rest, yeah, but they sound the same. It, yeah, I it, think that's what it is too. It's yeah. like it's flow don't ever switch up. You are right about that, but people enjoy that that sound over and over. Like I like the baby. Um, hey, you know, he, be, he rap what he be doing though. Yeah, that's, it, that's exactly everything. why because he's actually authentic. Like he will beat nah, your ass he, if you talking he, shit. He will slap you in your mouth. So I, like I can not. always being being from the hood, I can respect a nigga like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and sonically, I mean, it all sounds the same, but it doesn't sound terrible. So I can listen to that because I can actually understand what he's saying. Most of the time, I can't even, I, I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. So I can't really get with that. And I think <laughs> to make a point where you were before, I think back then as well, it was about lyrical content. And that's mm-hmm. why people like push those longer songs because they had a lot to say. And now it's just not about that. Now it's just about sounding like you can rap more than being able to rap. It's starting to kind of come back to lyrical content though, because us as a consumer, we can actually find out what we want to consume. And now with social media at times, we can promote what is good out there and shit like that. You feel me? Yeah. What we yeah. Lyrically yeah. Good. So it's like, I'm seeing more of a balance than it was a, like a couple years ago. A couple years ago, it was just nothing but, well, they called it a certain genre of music too. Like in 2016, with all the like the Lil Zans and the Lil... Uh, Mumble rap? All the lulls, yeah, yeah. It was mumble rap, but they also they could they put in another type of genre too. But yeah, the mumble rap shit, bro. Like yeah, it's, it's still happening, and it it sucks, bro. It really sucks one million percent. But like yeah. I said, just like you, y'all guys, I'm gonna sooner over too. I listen to it. I don't like it. That's why I put on old stuff because it's just so much better for me in my ears. I don't want to go deaf and be gauging because <laughs> I got nothing else to listen to. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but okay, so I had a, a I had an interesting conversation with this one potter the other night, and he was telling me about monetization, about okay. monetizing your pod. So, do you fellas know that you, since I believe you guys run your thing as a business, and if you don't, then I'm asking, do you guys run your guys as a business as well as do you know about the tax breaks that y'all get? Yeah, we uh we run it as a business. The thing about it, I know the tax breaks, but we can't do no tax breaks until we start uh having like some income and revenue coming in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's All the right. thing. We can't we can't really benefit from the tax breaks so much right now until we start having a little bit of revenue coming in from it, and then we can go from there. But business wise, me and Frank know about all that shit, bro. Okay, so yeah. give me like give me some game because I'm I'm always interested in finding out more than what I knew previously. So whatever you guys are willing to share for me and the listeners out there, especially if there are other pausers like the three of us, can you share some of the things that you didn't know but now you know and always willing to share whenever you get a chance? Okay, you wanna you wanna start out, Frank, or you want me to? Well, yeah. So first of all, when you do this, it's gonna be mostly about consistency on on this side of it so um the more consistent that you are with the, the content that you put out obviously the more that back end is is going to have its functional feature right so um but if we're talking about business wise use first of all use social media all social medias as a platform um for anything you do secondly you want to create merch create merch for whatever you're doing um because as your listener base grows they want to be able to represent you they want to be able to speak about you and that gives them another way um to be able to you know represent the brand that you've created and it gives you another way obviously to monetize you know what you're doing as well um thirdly a a a big one is i know magic was mentioning it earlier but um using other services to get your information out. What I mean by that is um, use like, you know, Fiverr to help promote what you're doing Um, on this side. There's a lot of, you know, people over there that do promotional work for relatively low prices Um, on that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now you do have to 
um, just follow up with them and make sure, read the reviews and everything like that and make sure that you're dealing with somebody that's actually going to have good business acumen and actually um, be willing to put work in it. And they have a feature on there where you can look at their previous work as well. So make sure that you are uh, doing that too. What you got, Magic? So when it comes to the business side, if you own some shit, right? You want it to look good, right? Make mm -hmm. it look good. Reinvest in yourself. If you want to yeah. buy some light, see how my shit set up? Wasn't set up like this. Before, you feel the lights, the, the nice little shells symmetrically with the other lights. No, I kept reinvesting incrementally. That's a word, right? Yeah. Big math college. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, put that degree to use, brother. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but incrementally, a lot of people want to try to get everything at once. No, incrementally invest in yourself. Buy some shit. Be like, mm -hmm. all right. And then keep doing it. And then something will pop in your head and be like, all right, damn. I need some more. Oh, I need this. Oh, now I need this. You feel me? Buy incrementally. Don't be trying to buy it all at once and go broke. And then you can't fucking buy food for yourself and eat and shit like that. So another thing. Write them motherfuckers off, man. Receipts that you get, bruh. If you go into events and shit, write it off. Gas you get, write it off. At the end of the day, if you're a business, act like a business. If you work for a business before, you saw how they write off shit. They have you. What? Like, I, yeah, an expense. When I used yeah. to work for the whole door to door, uh, what's that shit called? I mean, I worked for Cut Cold one time, which is like they got nice knives, but they're pyramid scheme. Um, but they they write off everything. That's why yeah. they ask you. Tell us how much mileage you done went, how much gas is, how much this and that, because they write that off. And you could do that too once you declare yourself as a business. I ain't gonna tell you how to do that shit because there's so many other people that tell you how to get an LLC or be a sole proprietor and all that. I'm just telling you about you could do it, you could write it off with your receipts, save receipts for everything, bro. Groceries, hell, you might get write that off. Who knows? You write some of it off. Because if you're working from home, when you eating at home, your home is an office now. Think of uh -huh. it as an office and you going to the cabinet and pantry. You feel me? You eat, you eating the office food. That's a write-off. You go to There's a certain office. percentage of, of rental, your rental property or your, your mortgage that you are able to write off. Yeah. Now, now that you can do a hundred percent of it, but you can do, I think like 30% last I checked um if you are doing whatever business out of your own home so um again those are that is a savings to you regardless uh of what you do and and lastly i would say if you're gonna you know really want to do this and, and really want to go far treat it as your plan a don't have a plan b um because plan b creates weakness in what you're doing because you know you have a something to fall back on treat it like this this is it like there's nothing else that you could possibly do to be successful if you treat it like that you're going to think about it when you wake up. You're going to think about it before you go to bed. You're going to think about it in the middle of the day. Everything else becomes secondary. Um, if you really want to have any level of success, that's the only way to do it. And another thing, like I keep saying, you do this at your job, right? You go there. You set it as a schedule for you. Mm -hmm. That's the same for this shit. Set a damn schedule. Yes, sir. You don't think there's people just pop up and if people that pop up and come become viral and then don't have no back end of work because they didn't set up a schedule for themselves to keep you know you it's going to be repetitive that happens hell jeff bezos bro that nigga did the repetitive shit before he started booming it's a business treat your shit mm -hmm. like a business yeah and whether, it's, whether it's one hour you put aside a day two hours three hours four hours you know one day you dedicate eight hours to make sure you stick to that plan Make yeah. sure you stick to that. Um, because like like you said, in any other, other business, when it's time to show up, you show up. And if you aren't showing up for yourself, why do you expect other people to show up for you? Very simple. Preach. Facts. Facts. Yeah. So with y'all explaining the business side of it, the social media side, which that's where I'm I'm juggling both because it's like I do everything. I do, you know, the editing, the recording, yeah. the promotion and so forth. So 
uh, from you guys from the Think Tank podcast. For I mean, Magic and Think Tank. How did you guys get to where you are, to where you have a certain level of success, to where you have a following in comparison to me, to where I really don't have that much, but it's steadily trying to build. How did you fellas get to where y'all at, to where y'all say, oh, we got a good following. We're able to sell merch, like you know, Mall mentioned and you mentioned, to where it's it's coming in into fruition. Well, I mean, I would say we're we're still we're, we're still we're still not where we want to be. So we're still mm -hmm. uh, measuring. I know that Kamal has recently started using Reddit, and and um, he's seen feedback on that end. I manage our TikTok account, and that's where we've seen an increase in listeners from posting our content on TikTok. And uh, so, and, and actually like engaging. And that's what we mean when we say put time aside, put time aside actually as well, you know, that eight hours, make sure two hours is dedicated to social media. And I mean, not just you posting, but you're replying on social media or you going to other podcasts um, or going to people that you, you think that would enjoy your content and posting on their, you know, on their pages and replying to them. And, you know, it's just using, that platform, um, like I said, most people are on TikTok right now. I mean, that's just what it is, you know. So that's where we've seen engagement. That's where we've got more listeners. That's where we were able to get guests. That's, to me, a, 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 a good way to kind of navigate the, the social media aspect in the waters. I think that the older, you know, Snapchat, I mean, not Snapchat, but uh, Instagram, it's basically now for like models and shit like that. Like it, it's not really for a bunch of social engagement. You're not going to get a lot over there. Twitter. It's a fun place. Love um, it. It, really, it really is. It's, it's yeah. filthy and we love it. Right. But uh, again, it's tougher to get, you know, the, the engagement to cross over onto your podcast because a lot of those people are short lived in their, their memory and their attention span. So they can't pay attention to things for any longer than a few seconds. But like I said, TikTok has just been a, a way that we've been able to, to to grow our listening. And obviously, you, this is considered a platform as well. So we use StreamYard as well to, to, to post. And we make sure that we're always replying to comments and posting comments and uh, really making sure that we engage. Engagement is going to be the key to success. Yeah. And, and look, man, we ain't perfect out there, man. Especially me, man. I'm still working on this shit my damn self. Yeah, we I'm are. working on engaging more and stuff like that. So it's just a goddamn grind, bro. You just gotta, you know, grind up, grind it out, bro. Like, I, I actually enjoy the like the posting aspect and stuff like that, and like looking at other people's content. But at the same time, it's so much fucking. I just call it filler. It's so much filler content out there that I'm just don't care about, and that shit get thrown in your damn face. So it kind of be discouraging me from being on certain like social medias at times but you gotta get through it you gotta you know get on in and fucking engage and shit so mm -hmm. i'm working on the shit my damn self but, i hear you i hear I you mean, we is getting a c consistent following that's just because uh i'm gonna just be be real because of consistency really mm -hmm. okay know? And motherfuckers think we funny shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you know? Yeah, man. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna attribute it to uh you know us just being you know one of the greatest podcasts that ever fucking exist. You know yeah. that's what we're gonna attribute it to. Now Fuck you all the bullshit. Too, fresh. Yeah, we out here. We you know I mean we got we got the, the, the trio, nigga, the trio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta speak it into existence. You gotta act, you gotta be when you're doing this. You have to be bold and you got to do everything with your, with your chest out, right? If somebody's timid, I'm not listening to them. I want people, even if they're wrong, I want them to believe what the fuck they're saying. If I learned nothing else from the Donald Trump uh, era is you don't really have to know what the fuck you're talking about. You just nope. have to believe you know what you're talking about. Wow. <laughs> That's it. Right. Trump, bro. Come on, boy. The, the, the Magic Think Tank podcast is one of the greatest podcasts of all time. I don't care who or what you're talking about. We're going to be great. You're going to be great. <laughs> fuck everyone. Magic Think Tank for life. But <laughs> if I heard nothing else from that motherfucker, is that just say it with your chest out, nigga? Y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all brothers are just y'all, y'all are unique. You really are. Y'all, y'all go together very well, very, very well. Appreciate it, man. Fire, nice, baby. Light skin, dark skin. 
Yeah. Well, I, hey, look, look. I just say it, Maul. I did not say it. He did. So he, he's he's uh, speaking into existence. So y'all got something going here. <laughs> but before I get y'all out of here, I want to ask y'all a few more questions. So, right. um, if y'all listen to my podcast, which y'all said y'all have, what did y'all enjoy about it? To where y'all said, okay, let's go join fresh. Let's sit down and chop it up with. Man. So first of all, for me, I like like he said, I look for you know consistency. Um, and that's what I like kind of going through, um, your pod that you're putting out content on a very consistent basis. So that's what I always look for from any, from, from anybody that's creating, um, anything is if they're constantly putting out, uh, if they're constantly putting out, uh, content, um, you know, secondly, um, I liked cause the ones I've listened to has been your engagements with your guests, right? So I like how you're able to kind of cater your content and uh, your uh, the, the way you do your podcast to the guests that you have on. You know, a lot of people don't do it that way, right? So they just, mm-hmm. you know, keep the same format and they don't give the guests the floor um, as well. And you always give your guests an opportunity to speak about th- their platforms, whatever they're doing. And, um, you know, really engage it and you you push their shit as well. So that's me. Yeah. The reason why I'm fucking with it is because one, bro, you funny, bro. You give, you give, you give information in a comical way. That always grabs my ear, grabs my attention. Mm-hmm. Second, your audio sound fucking good, man. There'd be so many people out there with that trash yeah. ass back your garage band audio I'll be like, what the fuck, bro? Why y'all got this shit? I don't know, man. That's another. So the audio good, you feel me? You you have great topics. You feel me? And also, I'm, I'm going to be biased, bro. You're a black man. I heard your shit first. I was like, oh, this motherfucker be cursing. And he be, he be knowing some shit. Some podcasters would be like, I can't say the F word, so I'm gonna just say yeah. word. I can tell you're being awful. I can't say any curse words because I want to be super monetized. Yeah. Like, nigga, you a grown ass man. <laughs> hey, shit. <laughs> yeah, but we can really tell that you're being authentic to the person that you are. And to yeah. me, that's what's important. And you take- anything that I do, anything I listen to, any anything I consume, I want to consume it from somebody that has a level of authenticity. And yeah. we can tell that you believe what you're saying. You're not just saying shit for clicks, likes, views. You're saying it because you believe it. And that's and what I can respect for the most part. And as a as fellow podcasters, bro, and YouTubers and shit like that, I feel that you're taking it serious. There's so many people out there that act like they, they just don't take it serious. And that shit be irking me. Yeah. So after hearing your pod and shit, yeah, bro, I'm a motherfucking fan. Appreciate it, bro. I fucking appreciate it. I appreciate both of y'all. And I'm going to, you know, answer this the best way I can. So I'll go to Kamal first. Like, my audio, I first started out, I was trash. I am not going to lie. I remember <laughs> recording my first one on my phone like this. I was saying it like this. The and phoner. That's how I was, yes, the phoner. Because I was doing it do uh, Anchor, which I still do. But then I got better and better because I had my brother, who was a potter himself, listen to it. He was like, bro, you need to get some headphones. You need yeah. a mic in front of you so you yeah. can be able to talk directly and the sound come out a little bit more clear and more mm-hmm. crisp. And I did that. Like you said, Ma, I am itemized. That's what I started doing. Started getting things one by one and it made a little bit better. And my content, I've always been real. I've always been authentic in everything that I've done. I write everything out, everything. So everything that y'all have listened to, everybody's listened to, everything is written by me. I'm not biting off of anybody because that's how my mind is. So all the words that y'all have heard from then to now, it's all through me. It's funneled through me from my brain to the pen to the pad, 100%. I try to be authentic and as real as I can. And if I'm not, then I'm not going to record nothing, but I try to do it on a consistent basis. Like I always say, I have backup ones just in case I don't put nothing out for a week that I've written that is just sitting there just in case, but it's always going to be 
on a consistent basis. And yes, I take this real. I really do. Now I'm starting because now I'm starting to build a following and it's becoming more and more. It's like I'm enjoying it. I want listeners to know more, to hear more, to get more from me than I possibly can give. So I don't try to bring the fakeness or like you said, I don't try to fake the funk. I'm not looking to be capping for anybody because there's no reason to. Um, And then going to you uh tank is yes when i have guests on i want them to come on and talk about them to be themselves we be real yes let's get sarcastic but then again while we get sarcastic let's have some orgasms to where we're coming in our brains where we're having a good time we're laughing we're having an engagement that is just it's real it's like if someone's listening they're thinking that we're just sitting here three people or two people just shooting the shit and having a good time so i do try to cater my show my platform to any and everybody that does come on because i want it to be like we just homies sitting on the porch just kicking it having a good day you know because you never know and that's the energy that i like to give out and i like to bring that because you never know who somebody (laughs) is when they go into their pod what the listening atmosphere could be so i'm always open always and that's why i welcome you brothers because when i hit kamal up and i went through his page i'm like wow This brother is really different from the people that I've interviewed so far. And then when he told me he had a partner, I'm like, well, I don't see him, but I'll see what's going on. So just you brothers coming on and talking with me and welcoming me and we sitting down and having maybe not these great conversations that everybody likes to hear, but it's real. That's the thing. A lot of these pilots, they don't have real conversations because it's just recycled. It's bullshit. Mm -hmm topic that everybody keeps talking about but it's like oh we're listening because so i yeah. thank you brothers i really do no, we, yeah, appreciate, we, we appreciate it man. Man. For, real. for real man um and like i said the support's always going to be there um get prepared for for the shout out on, on on next week's pod man and um you know shoot all your info so that we're able to to, to try to get you some 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 subs going your way as well man yeah, and you're gonna uh, be on the pod too soon bro yeah, we got that's what we'll guests, say. guests that we uh having on too and shit so be prepared bro yeah gonna, yeah oh, we I'm got a sure. we got a nice little lineup going and but and we like the way we the format we like to use is uh a week on with guests and a week off and uh the reason we do that is because we enjoy having guests on but we don't want to lose what brought the fans to the table which is mm-hmm. our unique relationship and our unique take on things. Um, so we, we try not to oversaturate with, uh, with guests. And like I said, you know, every other week. So we definitely going to have you on the pod, man. So get ready to, uh, to have some fun with us, man, and rock with us and talk about some unique stories, unique perspectives, man. And, uh, yeah, man. So we, we, we definitely just, uh, appreciate 100% you having us on, man. You're yeah. No, no problem. I mean, it's black ex- excellence right here because I have yet to come come across a lot more black podcasters. Like, yes, I see them, I hear them, but speaking with them, I got to go through a third party just to get with them. Like, yeah. I hit one up on Instagram. It's like, oh, well, my assistant's going to get with you and we'll talk with you in a couple months. Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell is that going to do for me now? Like, I'm, I'm trying to build here just like you are. How have people become so high and mighty that you're going to get your fucking assistant to hit me up when you're ready? Like, what is this <laughs> that make? Like, people yeah. just don't seem to think. Like, remember, you started in the same place I was. So, bitch, you need to come back to Earth and remember who you are. Like, get you my assistant. <laughs> yep. Jesus yep. Christ. Yep. <laughs> I got the receipts. So I can show you if you want me to. But yeah, but that's just my thing. Like I, I'm trying to set the bar so high for myself that I'm going to reach it. That I'm going to go hit up people that I normally would have never talked to in my personal life. Like you know what? I have a persona I'm building. I'm one different people. So I'm gonna go on Instagram, start hitting up people. Hit up this one chick, and I swear to you, and this is true life story. This girl, she made a major trans transformation. She was at like two. I'm um, pushing three hundred. She was really pushing 300, got herself down to like a buck 20. All she ate was fruits and veggies. I asked her, I said, I would love for you to come on and talk about your story. Well, I don't want to be exposed. I said, I'm not trying to expose you. I'm trying to show people that if you put in the work, that if you do what you're supposed to, 
it, anything can happen. Like results, like I said, results may vary, but if you do it in a certain way, you'll get to what you want to get to. Well, I found out she didn't want to come on because she had OnlyFans. Surgery. I'm like, well, you oh, could have just said that. Exposed. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, you could have just said that instead of me just miraculously finding on Twitter. Not that I was going looking, but it just came up through TL. So I'm like, okay. So I just deleted her. But Is she Mormon? I, no, no. Oh. She's a beautiful, beautiful, like she's half Japanese, half black. So she's I thought beautiful. you were gonna say she had like a tummy tuck or something. Yeah. Like no, 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 no. She was just got the weight off. She didn't eat them nah, fruits and vegetables. Nah, she, she was still she on was, the cookies she and cake. <laughs> she was a biggie, but she did some work. She, she did some work. But I'm just saying, in a sense, it's like I like to have different conversations for people. I really do because yeah. I got a lot of people listening, or I think I do. So I'm trying to bring different conversations and perspective. So that's what I'm saying is I'm reaching out no matter what. If I get a yes or a no, it's still fucking trying. Like the saying goes, nothing beats a fail but a try. No. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do. So when I reached out to you brothers, it's like y'all have a platform. It's bigger than mine. I want to go on and get exposure and then also get information that I never knew because I'm still new to this. Still new. I'm still fucking learning, but I'm learning in a way to where I'm utilizing because we got people out here that say, oh, I'm learning, but they never use anything with the information. No. Yeah. Yeah, and the second, the second that you believe, well, the second that you know that you know everything is when you don't know shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So there's always constant room for growth. There's always area uh, to do something different. There's always room um also to to share information and that's and you know that's what a lot of people are not willing to do like why i'm not going to sell you uh fuck everybody wants to sell a program this is how you do it now it's like nigga i'm not about to buy that shit i don't give a fuck what you're talking about i'll figure it out myself at this point you know what i'm saying like everybody got their whole little pyramid scheme popping off bro i'm not paying nothing (laughs) you know what i mean i just i'll figure it out myself but games should be free man you know what i mean and uh Mm -hmm. so we're you know as we continue to navigate through the waters, man, and, you know, increase our, our fan base, we're going to share the knowledge. We're going to share it on our pod. We're going to share it with people that ask us. But we've never been afraid to share information, man. I, I, you know, if you got something, you got something. If you don't, you don't. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Go. Definitely. Well, mm-hmm. well, I appreciate you brothers coming on and listening. And now for all those who are listening frank or mall please tell them where they can find you brothers and how they can get a hold of y'all bro i got this man i got this you know what i mean for my tubers out there youtube been around since 2005 i don't need to tell y'all what to do to get the motherfucking is this a video or is it yep, gonna, it's, it's, it's both gonna it's both it's both all right yep. to get this video our fresh channel booming all right but look at man to find us either type in the magic think tank or Kamal Johnson ENT, bam, we pop right up. And also, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Google Podcasts, and we're on SoundCloud across all platforms. Once again, either type in the Magic Think Tank or Kamal Johnson ENT, bam, we pop right up, man. That's it. I fucking love that. I fucking yeah. love that. You know, if I had a partner like him, I would be in a better place than I am now. <laughs> because just someone who has so much fucking energy like that shit, I need him to hype me up in the morning. Like, first get up, motherfucker, let's go. Yeah. Let's do this goddamn shit. Like, I remember when I was talking to him uh, last week, or, no, a couple weeks ago, he was telling me, like, yeah, first, I love your shit, but nigga, you need to start cursing. You need to be a little more active. You need to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sitting there. I'm sitting that there sounds the like my friend. <laughs> I'm sitting there in the car, and he's like, it's playing through my car, and I'm listening to this nigga. I'm like, you need to calm down, bro. Like, just calm down. The thing about it, bro, is like, bro, like people don't understand. I I be stoned too when I do this shit. So they be like, you stoned? Us? How the fuck did it? And it's like, my my thing is like, I condition myself to I I I look at this shit as something else that I love, and I I I still love it because you know I still play it basketball when i'm on the fucking court and when i was a all throughout my years when like i was put in position to be a captain and stuff like that i'm taking that knowledge from that and putting it into something else that i love 
You think somebody want to listen to somebody that like they say they love some shit, but they like timid. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you think you trying to holler at women? They want to hear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they want you to be. Expensive. You you remember when Tom Cruise professed his love for Katie Holmes on that show, and he was jumping on the couch and shit. Yeah. You knew this nigga meant it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you when you see that passion in his eyes, you think you think motherfucking Eric the preacher would be who he is if he was like. Uh, if you guys could please uh, just go out and uh, continue your grind. Nobody's listening to that shit. Hell no. Okay? Say it with your chest, nigga. That's yeah. The <laughs> and, but the thing is, okay, you, 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 you have to get in your mind, too. You're going to turn some people off. That's naturally going to yeah. happen. But if you see most of the people, especially the people that they look to as celebrities and all that shit, these niggas talking with passion. They ain't talking fucking like Dilbert and shit. The thing I want for you, bro, embrace the fucking hate, bro. Embrace yeah, the hate. You gotta live in the darkness like Bane. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You you gotta embrace that motherfucking hate and you gotta love it. Because the more hate you get, the more successful you know you're about to be. Because when niggas know you at the precipice, is crabs in the barrel, they're going to try to pull your ass down back to the bottom of that yeah, bitch, back into the old fist. <laughs> don't let them niggas do it. You know what I'm saying? Keep your grind. I always say, look, I'm not, I don't even respond to them niggas, bro. I just look at it and I smile. I smile I a good smile, too. I don't want to go ear to ear. I smile. I smile like, oh, yes. You know what I mean? I love this shit. You know what I mean? I do, this, I do the same thing in the face of confrontation. Like, if, if a nigga want a box or something like that, I smile. Because mm-hmm. I know I'm good at that shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Anything you good at, nigga, when it's about to happen, you put a nice little smile on your face because you know it's about to get real. That's what that's what I do when I see the hating ass comments. I'm like, oh, yeah, motherfucker, you see me. Mm-hmm. You see me. You know what I'm saying? So embrace the hate, live in the darkness, my guy. But yeah, man, like, look, at the end of the fucking day, bro, it's like when you have passion for something or you love something, you... If you want to get into this podcasting and you want to show that passion and love, just take something that you already existingly love. If you fucking love shows and you with your homies and you talk about, God damn, man, see how they shot that shit 24 frames per second and shit. You know what I mean? That passion and shit. Just bring it over to podcast. That's what I brought over. I was like, bro, like, I, I, in basketball, people fuck with me because how I play the, the game of basketball. I'm passionate about it. You feel me? They gonna fuck with me for potting because I'm bringing that in. That's just that's just how I look at it. You feel me? I know sometimes I'd be like, man, man, maybe I do need to calm down and shit. But it, I got balance, all right, bro. Nah, so- well, see, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant like the energy you gave me. That was the first time someone gave me some really hype energy with basically good and bad news because it was good criticism. I'll take it like that and. Yeah. I haven't been getting that because, of course, I got, you know, I got people that I mess with that have been fucking with myself since the beginning. But it's different when it comes from somebody like you and Frank who've been doing this for a while. Yeah. So you yeah. telling me, Fresh, you got great stuff, great audio, but turn the music down a little bit. Didn't know yeah. that. I thought I thought it was it was a good balance I was doing. But now I'm starting doing that. It's just getting the criticism that matters. Because yes. you got a lot of people out here, they ain't going to give you shit. They just be like, oh, your shit's good, and then keep it moving. But they don't tell you why they think your shit is good and what you can do to improve it. So mm-hmm. what I say, like the hypeness you gave me, I appreciate it because I needed that. I needed it to keep succeeding and doing what I'm doing. So that's how I meant it, bro. That's how Amen. I meant it. No, I, I knew, bro. And my thing is this, bro. I'm, I'm from Oakland, bro. We high energy up there, bro. I mean, I've been living out here in Dago since 05, but you can never take the bay out of me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've been on me for years, bro, and I'm always been, I'm always hyper. It It's a problem when I'm like mellow and quiet. That's when I get into my, I might need to whoop someone's ass. Home. <laughs> True bill. That's no. true, <laughs> Frank, that's no. true yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm enjoying myself. I'm, I'm good. You feel me? Mm-hmm. That's when I, yeah. that's when I put the arm around, little bro. You know, we, we yeah. just, 
we walk away like, bro, chill, man. Fucking chill, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to tell him to chill when he not hyper. You know what I mean? It's, it's a it's weird. Wild. That's weird, ain't it? Damn. <laughs> but it's good you brothers join me so much. Thanks for so much for coming on. I appreciate it. And all to all my listeners, listen, what you're doing, you need to stop. If you're listening, if you're watching, go look up the Magic Think Tank on all platforms, all platforms. Make sure you go hit them up, like, subscribe, comment, give them a shout out. And then also, this has been another episode of Sarcasm and Motherfucking Orgasm. I've been joined by my two, two favorite hosts of all time right now. The Magic Think Tank. Thank you. Can I say one thing before we we leave though? Yeah, man, what's up? about to get my Dr. Umar on. <laughs> right, folks? Juneteenth is for us. <laughs> it's not for sale. It's not for sale. Happy Juneteenth. Happy early Father's Day because, you know, Frank is a father. Yes, and sir. He's a black man and black yes, men sir. take care of their damn kids. Yes, sir. I wanted to put that out there before and, we go, man. And, and lastly, we like to say whenever we're on somebody else's pod that we do the takeover. So, so look, if y'all listeners, y'all watching this, sarcasm and orgasm listeners, y'all look yeah. at me. Look at me. <laughs> I am your captain now. <laughs> I am your captain. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. We appreciate you, Fresh Man. Y'all go appreciate out you, there. Brother. Y'all, y'all support sarcasm and orgasms, bro. Shit needs Fuck to be with it. coming. Hell yes. yeah. Get with it or get lost, y'all. Absolutely, 100% on God. So this has been another episode. Thank you for joining me. I'm Fresh. Talk to y'all soon. Peace.